Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and today's video will be answering the question, what is interval notation? Very handy notation to know. Let's get right into the lesson. We'll start off with the real number line, and of course, on this line are all of the real numbers. Interval notation gives us an easy way of representing any slice of this line. It could be one slice, it could be a combination of slices, or it could even be an infinite slice that continues infinitely. So for example, let's put some marks down here on the real number line. Let's say this is 0, 1, 2, and 3. Of course, all of the negative numbers are out here to the left. We're not going to write them out just yet. And let's say we want an easy way to write out the set containing all numbers from 0, including 0, up to 2, and including 2. So all of the numbers in that line there, plus the boundaries. How could we write out the set that contains this interval of numbers? One way to do it would be using set builder notation. We could write it out as the set containing all real numbers x, such that 0 is less than or equal to x, and x is less than or equal to 2. This certainly works. It is the set containing all of these numbers in this red interval, but it's not necessarily the most elegant solution. And since we often need to describe intervals of the real numbers for things like domains and ranges of functions, it's nice to know that there is a better way of writing out this set of numbers, and that's using interval notation, which would look just like this. So this is the same as this. They are both sets containing the exact same real numbers. So this is a closed interval from 0 to 2. We know that it's closed because of the square brackets. The square bracket tells us that we're including the endpoints. So again, this is the exact same thing as this set here. This is the set containing all real numbers that are between 0 and 2, as well as 0 and 2 themselves. But let's say we didn't want to include those endpoints 0 and 2. Let's move these sets over to the left a little bit. And let's go in and adjust our interval up here on the number line. So if we don't want to include the endpoints 0 and 2, we can represent that with open circles. So previously we had the circles filled in. Now, since we're not including those endpoints, we'll leave them empty. So this here is the interval of all real numbers from 0 to 2, not including 0, and not including 2. So now if we want to change our set builder notation representation of this interval, all we have to do is change the inequalities. So now 0 has to be less than x, and x has to be less than 2, because 0 can't be in the set, and 2 can't be in the set. So now we've made the necessary adjustments. This set here is a description of this interval. All real numbers from 0 to 2, not including 0, and not including 2. So now what do we have to do with our interval notation in order to account for this change? Well, it's pretty simple. All we have to do is erase the square brackets and replace them with parentheses. These parentheses mean that we're not including the endpoints. So this is the set of all real numbers from 0 to 2, not including 0, and not including 2. So again, these two things are the same. They're both sets containing the exact same real numbers, and of course, they're both precise representations of this visual representation of a specific interval. Now what if we change things up again? Let's say we still don't want to include 0, but we do want to include 2. So then we'll write a filled in circle above the 2. So this is the interval of all real numbers from 0 to 2, not including 0, but including 2. So again, it's a pretty simple change to our set builder notation. All we have to do is make x less than 2 into x is less than or equal to 2. So this allows x to be equal to 2, so 2 is going to be in this set. So now we have changed this set sufficiently, so it is a representation of this interval. This set contains all real numbers from 0 to 2. It doesn't include 0 because x is strictly greater than 0, but it does include 2 because x is less than or equal to 2. So now, of course, what change do we have to make to our interval notation in order to account for the change we made to our red interval? Well, it might be just what you expect. We just have to erase this parenthesis on the right and replace it with a square bracket. So now, this is just the set of all real numbers from 0 to 2, not including 0 because we have the parenthesis here on the left, but we are including 2 because we've got this square bracket here on the right, so that's how we know we're including 2. 
so it's pretty neat and gets the same information across very quickly. This is the same exact thing as this here. They're both sets, including the exact same real numbers, and again, they're both precise descriptions of the interval that is represented visually with this red line. Now for our last example, let's get a little freaky. Let's say we want to include all numbers from 0 to positive infinity and all numbers from 0 to negative infinity, but we don't want to include 0 itself. So let's first change our red line. Now we're not stopping at 2, so we can draw this red line out. It's just going to keep on going to infinity. We're including all of these positive real numbers. Now remember, we also want to include all of the negative numbers. So we'll take our red line out into the negative direction, put an arrow on the end so we know that that is continuing infinitely. And again, we've got that open circle above the zero because we're not actually including zero. In this case, since we're including all but one real number, interval notation might not actually be the easiest way of writing this set out, but we're gonna write it out in interval notation anyway in order to drive home a few points. We're going to skip the set builder notation because we've already talked about that enough. Really what we want to talk about now is interval notation. So we want to write out an interval that includes all of the negative numbers, all of the positive numbers, and does not include zero. So in the negative direction, our interval is going all the way to negative infinity. So we have negative infinity on the left. And then it goes all the way up to zero and stops. Now we'll put a parentheses to the right of zero because we know we're not including zero. And it actually works just the same with infinity and negative infinity. We always use a parentheses for infinity or negative infinity because those aren't numbers we can actually include in our interval. So this here is the interval of all numbers from negative infinity to zero. Of course, not including negative infinity because negative infinity isn't a number. So what that language really means is that we're just including all numbers that are less than zero. And of course, we're not including zero itself. But this is not where the interval stops because we know it also includes all of the positive numbers. So to account for that, all we have to do is union this interval with the interval that goes from zero to positive infinity. Again, we use the parentheses because you can't actually include infinity in your interval. So this interval is just the set of all real numbers that are greater than zero. And then by having this set union in the middle, we're taking both of them because we want, of course, this whole red line up here. We want all of the numbers that are less than zero, and we union that with all of the numbers greater than zero. So this hits on the last two points I wanted to cover, which is how to represent intervals that continue infinitely, as well as the fact that intervals are sets. So we're able to use set operations like union to combine multiple distinct intervals. But that's really all there is to interval notation. They are sets of real numbers. You start with a square bracket if you're including the starting point in the interval. You start with a parenthesis if you're not including the starting point in the interval. You end with a square bracket if you're including the end point in the interval. And you end with a parenthesis if you're not including the end point in the interval. Negative and positive infinity always have parentheses with them because you can't include negative or positive infinity in your interval. So this interval here from negative infinity to positive infinity is just the set of all real numbers. And since intervals are just sets, we can use set operations on them. So I hope this video helped you understand what interval notation is and how to use it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description. You always ask how I am. What's it look like to you?